you're going to have some medical school admissions committees and admission members understand what that is and love it. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A. I hope you're having a wonderful day. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. What can I help you with? Yeah, so, um, you know, due to COVID, it's kind of difficult to get um, clinical experience at this time. So I am working as a COVID disease investigator, which is very similar to contact tracing. We usually call the patients, um, COVID positive patients, interview them and ask them about about their symptoms, um, any kind of pre-existing medical conditions that they have, any recent travels and their recent contacts. And we then kind of reach out to the contacts and ask them about um, their symptoms and also like kind of um, ask them to isolate or quarantine. So I was wondering if it would be considered a clinical experience. Yeah. There, there are so many kind of new and different activities popping up here in this COVID time that so many students are just wondering, like, is this clinical? Is this not? Will medical schools accept my virtual shadowing? Will they not? And, and really, at the end of the day, it's going to be up to you to determine, is it clinical? Is it not? You can you can put whatever you want and let the medical schools decide. Unfortunately, this process is always going to be, it depends on the medical school. And so with COVID screening, you're going to have, uh, and, and more contact tracing, right? Not just someone coming into the hospital and you're taking their temperature, but, but more contact tracing what you're doing you're going to have some medical school admissions committees and admission members understand what that is and love it. And you're going to have other people not really sure what it is, not sure what you're doing, and really not appreciate it as much as maybe they should. And so I would mark it as clinical and let the medical schools decide, is it or isn't it? We have the same argument all the time with patient transport. Some medical schools like it, some don't. Uh, Being a pharmacy technician, I personally don't think it's clinical. Students put it as clinical, right? So at the end of the day, you mark what you want and the medical schools will adjudicate it in the end. Is it clinical? Is it not clinical? I, I think, I personally think it's clinical enough that you're not gonna get any people going, why the heck did she mark that as clinical? That's not clinical experience. That that you should go ahead and do it. I don't think there's gonna be any fallback from marking it as clinical, even if some people don't like it. Yeah, sounds great. So um, I was really wondering because I did talk to like admissions committee or like two admissions committee member from two different schools and um, they were, it was a very new experience for them too. And, but um, they were kind of like, very impressed as to like how I explained it and um, said that yes, it would be considered clinical experience. But again, as you mentioned, that it might not be the same for all schools. So it's yep. definitely yeah, and, and that may be right a, a very good example of something where uh, a lot of times people, when I talk about how to write activity descriptions, people go a little bit too far into the storytelling and they don't help explain something that may need a little explanation, right? Describing need an explanation? Probably not. Does being an EMT need an explanation? Probably not. Contact tracer probably needs a little bit of an explanation before you can potentially get into impact and story or however else you want to talk about that. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Thank you so much for the clarification. Yeah, you're welcome. What else? Um, so I think that was like one of my main questions um, for um, the activity section and also um, for anyone uh, reapplying. I was wondering if you would um, suggest them to rewrite their um, activity section. Yeah, I would. As much as possible, rewrite what you can. Uh, whether that's personal statements, secondaries, activity descriptions, disadvantaged essay, I would tweak as much as you can. Does that mean it completely changes? No, not necessarily, but but massaging it a little bit, maybe coming at it from a little bit of a different angle, maybe a deeper reflection. You're a year older now or how, however many years older, depending on last time you applied. And so you have more wisdom and, and more life experience to reflect on the experiences that you wrote about. So So I would go ahead and tweak as much as you can. Yeah, that sounds 
Right. Yeah, I think that's all the questions I had for you today. All right. So I want to ask, so you're retaking the MCAT. Why Why do you think you struggled first time around? Um, so I think I would say I was more focusing on content review and not doing a lot of practice problems. Okay. And uh, when I first took the MCAT, my MCAT, they got canceled about like five times <laughs> like, during COVID. Yep. And um, so based on my full lens, my actual MCAT score um, dropped by 10 plus points. Wow. So. I think um, that was really surprising for me. So I really want to see if it was like anxiety or stress. And I really want to do more full lengths and just get that. Um, yeah. How many full lengths did you do first time around? About five. Okay. So the AAMC has four. What was the fifth one that you did? Um, I did next up. Okay. Blueprint. Great. Yeah. So you just did the one extra, the one free test from Blueprint? Um, no, I actually had the next step. I, I think I did about three of them and two AMC full ones. So I didn't do all of the full ones from AMC. Okay, so a little bit of, little mistake there. Definitely recommend doing all of the double AMC full lengths. Uh, those are the gold standard. But but next step, as you mentioned, which is now called Blueprint, they have the, the second best exams if you go ask students on Reddit or Student Doctor Network. So that's a, a good uh, a good extra set of full lengths to do as you're going through it. It's a very common mistake that students make is they focus so much on content review, which theoretically, if you've done well in your classes, you shouldn't need to do as much content review and just use your full length exams and the review of those full length exams to guide your content review in between full length. So good good choice there for full length exams with Blueprint. Um, you do get the first full length for free uh, by signing up for an account over there, blueprintmcat.com. What else can I answer for you? Are you good? You're ready to rock. I think that's about it. But just like based on um, the Blueprint full lens, I just do want to make one remark. But it was my personal experience. I feel like the actual um, MCAT that I took last year was very similar to or more similar to Next Step uh, full lens. So last year when I took it, it was more similar to the full lens I took for Blueprint. Than, than the double uh, AMC exams, really? Yeah. Wow. In, in what way? I think um, based on the question format, uh, most likely. Um, so I felt like when I was taking the AMC full lens, they were more like straightforward mm -hmm. um, than the next step. So Blueprint. I just felt, um, yeah. <laughs> you keep saying next step, it's Blueprint. Blueprint and next step, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Um, interesting. No, that that's really good to hear. I mean, stu students love the blueprint exams, so so that makes sense. Um, okay, awesome. Well, hopefully, second time is better. And and right, a ten point drop from what you were getting on your full lengths to your actual tests could be a lot of things. And again, with COVID, lots of anxiety, lots lots of just uh just anxiety really at the end of the day. Uh, for for the real test, being out in the real world, potentially for the first time in a while, wearing a mask, taking the test, make sure your full lengths you're taking a mask uh, just to simulate that real environment as much as possible, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully second time is a charm and you won't have to take that stinking test again. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad I could help a little bit here for you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, it was really nice chatting with you and yeah.